Hello everybody. Now in this session of rapid revision of pathology, we are going to study or deal with the viva of museum specimens. That is the integral part of second MBBS examination. Now when we consider the viva, if I make a statement that at the time of viva, when you enter the examination hall, it is not the test of your knowledge. It is no more test of your knowledge. I am sure you are surprised with this statement, but it is true because when you enter the examination, it is the test of your temperament and presentation. How you present the specimens, how you react to the examination and develop the rapport, that is what is required. Now in these days we have observed that most of the students at the time of practicals they come with their smartphones and take the images of the specimens and they just match and when they appear for the examination at the time of answering they just don't bother to see the specimen carefully but have a cursory look at the specimen and say so this is the diagnosis. So this is the diagnosis and they come up with the diagnosis. But mind you, the examiners don't want the diagnosis, they want your approach, description and then arrive at the possible diagnosis. So also never make a mistake of giving the diagnosis of microscopic diagnosis. For example, you don't diagnose the squamous cell carcinoma or say adenocarcinoma of the breast. Instead you have to just say carcinoma or malignant tumor. In some cases you have to give the differential diagnosis. So keeping this in mind, one more thing I want to say is that the examiner and you have a limited period of interaction, say five minutes. And in those five minutes, don't waste the time. If you really don't know the answer, you say, sir, I don't know. But saying that frequently is not good. So best way is to get acquainted with the specimens in your museum and have a systemic approach for the description. Now what is that systemic approach? I would suggest the first thing is you identify the organ or system. So you first identify the organ and system and then get oriented to the anatomy of that organ and system. And then use the terminology relevant to the specimen. For example, I have often seen that the students would say, even in the specimen of the heart, they will say the external surface and the internal surface. The better way is pericardial surface and endocardial surface. So everything is not cut surface and Secondly, what is the specific diagnostic or specific lesion for which the specimen is kept? You describe that lesion first and then the associated findings. For example, in case of breast carcinoma, you describe the tumor and then describe the associated findings in terms of what is the status of the nipple or lymph nodes. So also in case of lung, you can describe the pleural surface as well as cut surface. So with these ideas, we will give some uh, uh, examples. We will try to explain or say answer some of the specimens as if we are answering the viva. First thing is when you are given a specimen, you have to look at the specimen. Even if you know the specimen, you have to look at the specimen from all the angles as if you are seeing it for the first time. Even though you know the specimen, you have to see from the, all the sides. So the examiner is convinced that you are carefully looking at the specimen. Now take this specimen for example. Now this specimen is, I would say, is the specimen of the breast as is evidenced by the shape and the overlying skin. Now the 
in the center you can see the nipple so this is the specimen of the breast the cut surface shows an elongated lesion which is about 5 to 6 cm in length and its borders are irregular and infiltrating into the surrounding normal appearing parenchyma of the breast in addition there is another tumor which is about 3 cm in diameter grayish white in color when we see this above in the there is the axillary tail dissection and there are seen multiple lymph nodes which are enlarged and show grayish white deposition so these are probably the metastasis from this primary tumor if we see the nipple nipple is retracted and below the nipple there is the thickening and puckering of the skin so sir my diagnosis of this specimen is this is probably a carcinoma of the breast with axillary metastasis of the lymph nodes associated with retraction of the nipple and 2d orange or podrange edema of the skin so that ends this now they may ask you the what is the cause of the uh, retraction of the nipple it is because of the invasion of the lactiferous duct and suspensory ligaments of the uh, nipple by the tumor cells the qd orange or podrange type of edema is because of the cutaneous lymphatics are obstructed by the tumor cells and there is edema in between which gives it a puckered appearance or orange peel like appearance that's why podrange then they may ask you the classification of the breast tumors they may ask you the lymphatic drainage of the breast tumors or lymphatic drainage of the breast and also ask about the sentinel lymph node they have answered everything nicely so uh, this is what i would suggest the way you should describe the specimen now let us take the other specimen for example now <clears throat> look at this specimen have a careful look from the capsular surface as well as from the cut surface now this is a bisected specimen of the kidney as it is a bean shaped the organ is pale and whitish in color now on the inner aspect that is the cut surface the distinction between corticomedullary parts or corticomedullary distinction is lost the inner surface is also pale and white and there is a proportionate mild increase in the pellucidation system the diagnosis of this case is large white kidney and the differential diagnosis is amyloidosis of the kidney cloudy change and the rpg or rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis so this is about the kidney kidney normal size is about 11 cm by say 5 cm so this is much more than that now let us take the another specimen of the kidney now in contrast to that look at this specimen of kidney now kidney on the capsular aspect in this case can you see this it is finely granular it is smaller in size kidney size is about 5 cm by 4 cm only and this is the bisected half if you go see the cut surface uh, corticomedullary distinction is obscured and there is a little increase in the pelvic fat so the diagnosis is small contracted kidney the differential diagnosis of small contracted kidney includes the kidney in hypertension or nephrosclerosis kidney in chronic glomerulonephritis and kidney in chronic pyelonephritis so this is how you should describe the kidney specimen
Suppose it is a uh, neoplasm of the kidney like this. Now how do I go about this? Look at the specimen from the cut surface and from the capsular aspect. Have you seen this? Yes. So now you can identify the organ as the kidney as the part of the ureter is seen and below one third shows the normal appearing renal parenchyma or renal tissue or lower pole of the kidney. Now the upper portion or the upper pole of the kidney shows a tumor which is about 8 by 7 by 6 centimeters. See you have to tell approximately. Sometimes I have seen in some institutes the people bring the scale and at the time of I was they bring the scale and start measuring. So uh, that uh, I don't like personally. But uh, better way is you take the rough estimate and say about 7 centimeters or so. So this is about say 8 by 7 by 6 centimeters. And what is the appearance? The cut surface shows uh, nodular areas, mostly grayish white. Some are cystic, some are brownish in color and some are showing blackish discoloration because of the necrosis. So this appearance is known as variegated appearance. And now this tumor on the side shows a capsule which is a pseudo capsule. Now a diagnosis of this case is renal cell carcinoma. We don't type whether it is clear cell or otherwise. They may ask you but we have to say it is renal cell carcinoma. Then you go to the capsular surface. And that is the capsular surface on the posterior aspects, there is a gerotal spacia. So this, in this case it appears that the gerotal spacia is thickened and infiltrated by the tumor. So this is a case of renal cell carcinoma. For example, we can go to the uh, lungs. Now this is the specimen. What does it show? I have to see from the, all the sides and yes, this is the wet mounted formalin fixed uh, specimen of the lung and on the upper lobe there is a cavity. The cavity is about 3 by 4 centimeters and the cavity has got rough wall, ragged wall and corresponding to the cavity and the lung. If you see the pleural surface, the pleura is thickened. So there are two findings. One is cavity in the apex which is irregular, shaggy rough surface of the wall of the cavity and the pleura is thicker. So this is the case of secondary tuberculosis type hybrocavitatory tuberculosis. Now in the tuberculosis there may be presentation in the form of one focus. Generally the lung is small and there is a uh, one focus in the lower pole of the uh, a lower part of the upper pole or the upper part of the lower pole in the subpleural zone. Small nodule may be seen and mediastinal lymph nodes may be enlarged. You don't see the connecting lymphatic channels in primary complex on gross. So that is another uh, presentation of the pulmonary tuberculosis. This is the Another specimen and very classical one, this is the slice of the lung as evidenced by, why I am saying lung as evidenced by the organ is spongy and there is anthropotic deposits. Now there are multiple small millet seed like whitish nodules which are raised above the surface and the size varies from pinhead to about 
2 to 3 mm and parenchyma in between appears normal. And the same thing <coughs> is seen on the pleural aspect. You must mention this. Same thing is seen on the pleural aspect. So this is a case of miliary tuberculosis. Now miliary tuberculosis, the mode of spread of miliary tuberculosis is hematogenous. Let us go to the other specimen of respiratory system and very frequently asked. Look at this specimen. <clears throat> this is the size of the lung and the affected lobe is lower lobe. The upper lobe shows anthracotic pigment and appears in this particular case partly atelectic. But down you can see the lower lobe is appears consolidated. It is solidified. Looks like liver tissue. So it is solidified. So solid solidification of the lower lobe. It means it is a case of lobar pneumonia. Don't in viva say whether it is hard or soft or um, cystic because you are not touching the specimen. So this is a case of lobar pneumonia. You can see if it is seen in other cases whether the pleural surface is showing evidence of pleurisy in the form of thickening of the pleura. In this case it is not seen because of the acute process. Now they may ask you what are the stages? Stages, stage of radiopatization, uh, sorry, stage of congestion, radiopatization, stage of gray hepatization and stage of resolution. The complications of the lobar pneumonia are to be told as intrathoracic complication and extrathoracic complication. Mm -hmm. An intrathoracic complication as you know mainly consists of lung abscess, empyema, pleurisy and extrathoracic as because of the dissemination which may be say meningitis, arthritis or bacterial endocarditis and so on. So this is how I think you should approach the uh, practical viva for the pathology examination. If you like this video, please subscribe and also like the uh, particular video so that uh, I can show you some more specimens in the next video. Thank you very much.